These factors and other abuses had the American people in a state of panic for their future and the very existence of the United States. The elite were in trouble. The people were beginning to see through their facade, past their front man, and to the ruling elite behind the throne. For the first time in U.S. history, both parties were universally hated. Congress had a 9% approval rating. The globalist agenda had stalled. And then, onto the scene came a man who promised change. Change we could all believe in. Barack H. Obama promised to end the war and bring our troops home fast. He pledged to uphold the Constitution and to stop the federal government from spying on the American people. Candidate Obama told American workers that he was going to get them out of NAFTA and GATT. And he's already breaking those promises. In this film, we will prove that Obama says one thing and does another, and that he works for the very same elite interest that Bush served, the very interest engineering the financial collapse and formation of a dictatorial world government. This film is not about left or right. It is nonpartisan. Our past documentary films are among some of the most damning indictments of George W. Bush and his administration that have ever been made. If humanity has any hope of affecting real change for the better, it will not come from the Madison Avenue false reality makers who have cast Barack Obama as the savior of the world. To alter our course from tyranny to liberty, to defeat the corrupt elite, we must get past the puppets and confront the real power structure of the planet. Now we can see a new world coming into view. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. Webster Griffin Tarpley is an accomplished geopolitical analyst and historian. Among his scholarly works are the unauthorized biographies of George Herbert Walker Bush and Barack Hussein Obama. Since Bush the Elder made his speech at the United Nations back in September of 1990 talking about the New World Order, I think I've become confused about what's actually going on in the world. The New World Order is a more palatable name for the Anglo-American world empire. It's the planetary domination of London, New York, Washington over the rest of the world. It's hard to get people to join that or think they have a part in it if you call it the Anglo-American world empire. If you call it the New World Order, then people in India or someplace like that or the European Union might think, well, there's something in that for us too. But that's not what it is. It's the Anglo-American New World Order. It's really the old world order. It's the British Empire morphing into the American Empire. The U.S. British World Empire is, is what you're going to get. Combines of powerful men have always battled with each other over the levers of power. Gerald Salente is recognized as one of the world's foremost trends forecasters and as the founder of the Trends Research Institute. People that are knowledgeable know that the fight that this country has been waging since its inception is for the central bankers not to take over the country. And that's why people like Andrew Jackson were elected. And that's why people revere people like Thomas Jefferson and others. The takeover has happened, and it's a corporate takeover. Agents of the Bank of England attempted to assassinate President Andrew Jackson on multiple occasions because of his resistance against a private central bank being set up in the United States. And it was something that Abraham Lincoln warned. And this is, by the way, why I believe he was assassinated. This is the Lincoln quote. The money powers prey upon the nation in times of peace and conspire against it in times of adversity. It is more despotic than monarchy, more insolent than autocracy, more selfish than bureaucracy. I see in the near future a crisis approaching that unnerves me and causes me to tremble for the safety of my country. Corporations have been enthroned. An era of corruption will follow and the money power of the country will endeavor to prolong its reign by working upon the prejudices of the people until the wealth is aggregated in a few hands and the republic is destroyed. 
Wall Street has killed Main Street. So I know how unpopular it is to be seen as helping banks right now, especially when everyone is suffering in part from their bad decisions. I promise you, I get it. Up until about the Kennedy assassination and the beginning of the war in Vietnam, the United States is a very powerful engine for world progress. It's the assassinations, the Kennedy assassination, and the others in the 1960s, the beginning of the Vietnam War, and the beginning of the absolute domination of the Wall Street group over every other interest. Nobody else counts except the Wall Street money masters. That has now made the United States into uh, no longer a force for progress, but something very different, often a force for destruction in the world. The military-industrial complex has taken over the country along with the Wall Street gang. If you look also at the people that Obama has put on his appointments list, it's all Wall Street. It's government of Wall Street, by Wall Street, and for Wall Street. There's nobody from heavy industry. There's nobody from the auto sector. Nobody from Silicon Valley. Nobody from big oil. Nobody from defense. No labor, no women, no retirees, no small business, nothing. It's pure Wall Street. The only people who have a voice in Obama's councils are Wall Street finance oligarchs. That's all there is. Nobody else counts for anything under Obama. It's the most extreme Wall Street administration we've ever had. Before his death, President Woodrow Wilson apologized to the public, regretting that he had been deceived by a group of international bankers and the country's financial system had fallen into their iron grip via the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. Whether sought or unsought by the military-industrial complex, the potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist. Dwight D. Eisenhower, he warned the people that the military-industrial complex was taking over the country. Only three years after leaving office, President Eisenhower's prophetic warning concerning the threat posed to our system of government by the military-industrial complex came to pass. President John F. Kennedy had enraged the entire elite network now, Kennedy was brought in as somebody who was expected to be a puppet. It was thought that his pro-Nazi father, Joseph P. Kennedy, the bootlegger, the speculator, would uh, guarantee that Kennedy would be obedient to the establishment. They thought that Kennedy was a sex maniac who could be manipulated through all of this, but it turned out that through his personal suffering, Kennedy had discovered a personal sense of himself which went beyond just being a puppet, and he began to think about things like economic recovery, world peace, having a space program, uh, making deals with uh, the Soviets, cutting the uh, Federal Reserve down to size, and a whole series of other things. Executive Order 